Uh, I will talk about the integration of spatial statistics in the data science workflow for the Algerian market or the Algerian case. Uh, we will start, this is the outline, and we can start with an introduction. The introduction has two parts. We will talk first about the data science workflow. My friend has already talked about it, but I will talk again. The data science workflow starts always with a question, so we will ask, an interesting question, then we, we can get the data. After this, we will explore the data. Finally, we will model the data with simple or advanced model. And finally, with the most interesting part is the communication or the reporting of the data. We will talk about uh, spatial statistics. I will not ask the question if you know or not, because I know that some people of you know this but I will talk about it again. Spatial statistics started historically with the snow cholera example in 1854. This example was uh, in London. We, uh, we observed that there is a lot of death by cholera in London and snow uh, has observed that th there is a correlation between sewer or water pump and cholera. And finally, they decided that the, uh, the sewer system is the problem. So from this, we started to observe the spatial statistics and we can define it. There is a lot of definition on the web or in books, but uh, to be honest, the, the, uh, the simple definition of spatial statistics is that we have some, some measurement that vary in space and we have study region. All techniques that uh, help us to analyze this data is called spatial statistics. We, uh, we can talk about the spatial statistics workflow also, is that we collect th this spatial data, we discover pattern, we generate hypothesis, we test this hypothesis, and finally we generate or we design some theory, we did develop some theory, sorry. Uh, no. The combination of spatial statistics and data science, we call it spatial data science. Uh, we can, uh, the converse of uh, this, this field is because there is a lot of use of GPS data in now, and that there is an estimation of seven billion people using GPS data in 2022. So uh, the emergence of all this data can uh, help us to develop new models called spatial data science. But we should know that spatial data science is not just the mapping of aggregate data and, and is not the extensive use of AI models. So when we say spatial data science, we are not talking about only a AI models. Uh, we can present some tool used to analyze spatial data or spatial used in the modeling of spatial data science like ArcGIS, Google Map, Apple Map, and all this. Now, uh, if we can talk about uh, the process of making uh, decision using spatial data science, we start by collecting the data. We can observe that there is four, generally four types of spatial data. There is the aerial data, and there is geostatistic data or point reference data. We can talk about point patterns and we can use some, some raster data or we, or we all know about, uh, we all know as the, the satellite images. Uh, in the part of spatial data modeling, there is a lot of models that are used in the literature like geographic random forests, spatial clustering, and all the above and others. No, uh, finally, sorry. Yes, uh, in the spatial data reporting or communication, we can use a lot of dashboard and there is no more uh, use of 2D, 2D uh, graphs. We can use the 3D graphs as shown above. Uh, now we can talk about the situation in Algeria. There is a lot of use of spatial data as mapping of aggregate, as you can see in this example of health. 
we, we can map the, the SMR or standardized mortality ratios around, uh, across all the 48 wilaya of Algeria. And we can use it also in uh, precipitation data or uh, hydrologic, uh, hydrologic use of this data. Among others, I cannot use an extens extensive use, uh, exhaustive list here. Finally, and if this is the most important part of my presentation, is that we will talk about the use cases of spatial data science in the real world. And we will talk about some perspective for Algeria, and uh, I think this is the... We can talk about some example in transportation. Uh, th this is the first example that we have some pedestrian crashes in uh, Minnesota, or Orlando, Florida. And this is an example also of car crashes. You can see that we can use some techniques called linear hotspots to, to detect the road with more crashes and uh, to avoid it or try to use some maintenance in it, etc. This example can be used in Algeria. I guess that we have the necessary data and all the techniques that can help us to use this if the department or ministry of transport can allow us to use some uh, existing data. We can use another example that is very interesting. Uh, we call it in spatial statistic co-occurrence. Is, uh, there is an example uh, also in Minnesota there is this uh, metro transit buses. They have some IoT devices in them, and we can collect data. And the question asked is, where are high transit nitrogen oxide transmission or emission? We can see in the map in the left uh, panel that there is a lot of uh, areas where we have a uh, transmission that is higher than the national level or that uh, exceeded the EPA regulation in America. And if we study this more with spatial data science techniques, we can find that there is two types of buses. The hybrid buses, they uh, have a higher to the emission of nitrogen oxides around the bus stops. And for the DSL buses, they uh, emit a lot of nitrogen oxide when there is a uphill ramp in the highway in, uh, interchanges. Uh, this example can be used in Algeria also if we, uh, if we use the data. I think that we have La Garoutière. There is a lot of companies that, uh, uh, that have buses with the long distances from Algiers to all the Algeria wilayas. So uh, we can use the same techniques. Yes, uh, we can use the same techniques to, uh, to estimate the, not only the nitrogen oxide emission, but we can use the, the time, what is the idea, what is the best time or the optimum time to go to this city, etc. using those techniques. Uh, we can uh, go to another example for uh, society UPS, uh, uh, United Parcel Cell uh, Services, is a delivery society. They can, uh, we can use spatial statistics using some techniques to, to, to develop the, the best path, energy efficient path. You can use also this technique in Algeria for our uh, delivery application, I guess that we have now Yasir Food and the delivery .com or something. We can use, or, or Jumia, for example. Uh, we can use this technique to have the best time or efficient time to go to delivery. This is in some AI or deep learning uh, model to, in transplantation also, to know the location of trucks in a city. We can use also this in Algeria. Uh, finally, we can use some mobility service providers uh, application like uh, Hitch or 
ESIR or TEMTEM, among others, we can use this to promotion. So uh, sometimes uh, Uber, this is an example to, from Uber, use spatial data science to know which people uh, I should propose to them the code, promo code, okay, or promotions. We use these techniques. Uh, we have some application in uh, smart cities and applications. I will talk about this application, for example. In the natural, di in natural disease, uh, diseases, sorry. Uh, we can use some uh, tweets and social network uh, posts to determine the exact location of uh, earthquake, for example. Okay? And this is also, uh, we can use this in, our, in Algeria for a marketing, for example, if uh, some society want to create a new store, you c uh, we can use uh, Facebook or other social uh, posts to determine where I should uh, create this new location. We have this also in smart cities uh, to determine the efficiency of public transits, metros or buses, with job avail uh, availability uh, or accessibility. So uh, we use some spatial data to know how many jobs is, are accessible with this bus or metro line. Uh, there is some example in agriculture. We use some satellite data to know the crop productivity and so. Uh, in telecommunication, for example, even my friend uh, mentioned some example, but I will uh, talk about this, is the internet coverage. We can use some spatial data to estimate the, uh, the percentage of internet coverage in some uh, places. I guess this is used already used in Algeria. Uh, in health, we can use this technique to calculate the distance to hospitals or to uh, so healthcare providers. This example here is in England, and we can see that even in England, there is two hours to go to a hospital by uh, public transport. And this is by card, it's less than, ta than that. This example, I guess, will be very helpful in Algeria. Uh, I can talk finally about infectious diseases. I guess that uh, there is a lot of infectious diseases in Algeria, even it's rare, but there is. We can use some deep learning or, or neural network models to develop real-time maps of infectious diseases. Finally, this is the last slide. I, uh, we can use this also in marketing and sale for clustering to know where is the cluster of restaurant, for example, or for uh, cafes or hotels. This presentation, as my friend mentioned, is from the Algerian R users group. We use some techniques using the R. I use spatial statistics for data science. We ca you can join the group also, and thank you. Merci, Monsieur Asseri. Euh, nous réinvitons Monsieur Flissi et Smaril pour rejoindre Monsieur Asseri pour animer justement le panel autour de la data science. Et donc, vous pouvez poser vos questions.